of the candidates have already been sent to INEC um, mm. by the party. We've been on this for a little bit now. We just need INEC to upload the names. There's been a court order to that effect. So mm. all that's left is for INEC to upload the names and we're good. So if the elections were to hold, you're saying that if the ele- INEC has, uh, is there a confirmation to you now that that has been done? Yes. Okay, so if the elections were to hold on 11th as earlier scheduled, your name would have appeared on, yes. on your party logo at least. Would yes, have appeared. yes, we would have, we would be on the ballot, yes. All right, so it's important that we we'll clear that out. Um, I also, you know, want to talk about this uh, um, other issue that's come up since, you know, Labour Party became a, you know, a popular name mm-hmm. in the political space. And there's the concern that many people are finding their way into politics now mm-hmm. because a certain individual, mm-hmm. you know, has identified with this mm-hmm. party that was before today, largely mm-hmm. unknown. Um, how do you respond to that? And in your case, is there really any correlation between that candidate's or, or that person's you know, uh, um, influence on your party and your decision to, you know, uh, um, run for office? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, we cannot deny the influence that His Excellency Peter B has had on the party since joining. Uh, and for me as well, that is one of the biggest reasons why I did join the Labour Party because I believe in the ideologies that the party is trying to build now, especially politically. I believe in what Peter B stands for as an individual, uh, his character, as they say, track record. I think they speak for themselves. Uh, so with me joining politics, as I said, the Labour Party is creating a space where they are prioritizing, along with existing policies that they want to put forward, youth inclusion in government, because they understand that we are the future leaders and lawmakers. So they're really trying to get as many young people into the ranks to really understand how the government system um, is, is run. So... If, because then the party has a structure, the party has, you know, leaders, there's executive council, all of that in the party. So if they didn't think, this is me using myself as an example, if they didn't think I was capable of carrying out the functions of a House of Assembly member, mm. I don't think they would front me, mm. if, you, if you get what I mean. Uh, so the thing really is, we all cannot just be on social media alone. We already have people that's championing that cause there and they're doing an amazing job. So we need to, as young people, work together across different frontiers. Uh, That's the best way for us to really get our voices heard. Do you think this is a fad? People Mm -hmm. think that they... That, that 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 the horde of of people just going into politics through the Labour Party mm. is something that would only last for a minute and then it would die out soon. And how are you seeing the longevity of you know this party as mm. a platform for young people? I see I see this party as having longevity for long people as long as we maintain the current value system that we have. I mean the obedient movement has been the biggest awakening factor for young people in Nigeria's democratic history in the sense that this is the highest percentage of youth participation we've had in politics before and a lot of that is down to Peter Obi, a lot of that is down to the Labour Party so as long as young people feel connected to the cause as long as the party continues to represent um, change and inclusion, I do think that it is long term I'm curious about, you know, what you're using to run. And Mm -hmm. here's why. Mm -hmm. The announcement of your campaign Mm -hmm. essentially came a day before the presidential elections, right? right? Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering, this is roughly two weeks, Mm -hmm. just about. Mm -hmm. And by extension of the election date, you Mm -hmm. now have an extra week. Yes. So on what are you campaigning? Because people before the 24th of February didn't know that you were running, right? You hadn't announced it. So are you campaigning on the strength of you and what you want to do Mm. at the State House of Assembly Mm. or are you now relying on the strength of the party, Mm -hmm. Labour Party being known and the outing that Mm -hmm. Labour Party had at the presidential Mm -hmm. elections, especially in Lagos? Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, uh, just due to some back-end situations, I couldn't announce my candidacy as early as I would have wanted to just because I needed to be sure that we were on the same page as a party and also the process with INEC where were followed through. In as regards my my campaign so far, I have been doing as much work as I can to cover ground and not just rely on 
the wave of the Labour Party alone. I am putting myself forth as a candidate and I want people to believe in what I have to offer. So I've been doing a lot of in-person interactions, trying to cover ground, visiting the grassroots level uh, within the Surulere constituency, really trying to have people understand the reason why I'm running and explaining my manifesto and the processes that I would like to carry out if elected into office. And at the end of the day, um, decision, the decision lies with the people. So if the people feel like they buy into my idea and they see me worthy enough to be a representative of them in the House of Assembly, I would like to believe that they would vote for me on the day. Let's talk about that idea. Um, so I looked at your contract with, mm -hmm. you know, Suri Larry mm -hmm. and your, your touting education, your touting mm -hmm. healthcare, mm -hmm. your touting youth empowerment. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Suri Larry is one of, the, one, of, one of the better, you know, places in right. Lagos State when right. it comes to these things that mm -hmm. you're proposing. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you want to do differently? For me, the biggest thing is approach to the governing process. The thing that we need to fix is what it means to be a representative. I am of the opinion that a lot of people go into politics as a business instead of what it is meant to be, which is service. So in terms of the existing infrastructure in Surulere, it could be a lot better in terms of policy implementation. Do, do we have an example of that? Okay, I'll give you an example. So instead of, say, focusing on pushing um, legislation to expand the number of schools in Surulere. We need to look at the existing schools in Surulere and look at the quality of education that they're getting and improve on that infrastructure before trying to spread out. Because at the end of the day, how many schools do we really need if we cannot have a universal standard level of education? You look at the schools now that are already in existence and the standard of education that kids are getting from these institutions is not on the level that it could be, especially if you look at the history of Surulere, where it's coming from. I, I went to primary school in Surulere. I have friends, you know, who went to primary school, secondary school as well in Surulere. And even just from the way, you know, students dress on the way to school, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on just the general perception of how they approach living in Surulere. We need to have more uh, role models in society, especially those that have passed through Surulere, just so that you know these, these kids know that it is possible to grow and have dreams and aspire and really make something of yourself. So for me, the main things that we need to sort out are, um, or that I would be pushing to sort out in the immediate would be education, would be um, human capital development in terms of trying to get um, people off the streets. I don't like to refer to them as thugs or mm. agueros. I, I think they're victims of circumstance. I could have been born into that circumstance. Um, I'm only privileged. So in terms of uh, give, uh, setting up vocational um, workshops and actually following through beyond um, the workshops are things we can do on the constituency level as well as making sure that we are pushing legislation in the house that actually um, makes into law the actual implementation like we need to be accountable based off of policies that we're putting in place because there are policies in place already that will help to tackle a lot of the issues that are on ground mm -hmm. but it's just the transparency and how these things are being implemented and the accountability of the leaders that right. we need to fix so uh your biggest contender mm -hmm. is a man who, and really no pun intended, right, experience-wise, whether it's, whether it's in the movie industry mm -hmm. or just in the work of being a lawmaker, mm -hmm. he's got more experience than you yeah. do, right? He's the biggest contender and he's the one who currently holds that seat, right. Desmond Elliott, mm -hmm. right? I'm wondering how you would convince people to vote you instead of him. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you get political experience by being in political office. Yeah. And... Well, one of the ways. Well, one of the ways is, is by being in political office. That's one way. The second way is, at the end of the day, the decision is with the people. So if the people feel like his experience is giving them the level that they want and they want to continue with him as representative, that is fine. Um, I am here to just 
talk about myself and my ideals and what I want to do in terms of service and bringing the government down to the people and being accessible. I kind of want to poke the bear and ask you mm. if you if what you're saying is that you don't think he is doing that because he also presented himself as a yeah. youth candidate. Yeah. I don't know how ho- how old he was when he was elected. Mm-hmm. This was 2015, mm-hmm. right? He was sworn into office mm-hmm. in 2015. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how old he was mm-hmm. then. But he presents as, mm-hmm. you know, presented as a youth mm-hmm. candidate. He may be old now. I'm not saying. <laughs> right. Yeah. So are you saying that he's not doing the things you want to do? What I'm saying is we definitely do not have the same approach or the same perspective to government. Mm. And I'm saying I live in Suleri and I see how things are done in Suleri and I think we could be doing it in a whole other way. Right. I'm um, speaking of uh, things that could be done better in Sri mm-hmm. Um So I'm sure you you know right of the men the the, the recurring unfortunate incidents at the Jelagba Bridge. Unfortunately, yes. Right. Um, and that for a lot of people is a source of concern. Mm-hmm. I I have lost a friend, you know, to um, to to the mishap mm-hmm. that we know. Everyone mm-hmm. knows what I'm talking mm-hmm. about now, and I don't want to remind anybody of that trauma if they've lost family there. Um, but Seeing as, you know, we're dealing with a property that might not necessarily belong to the Lagos State government, mm-hmm. um, how do you, do, do you have any plans for what to do about the Jolegba Bridge when you get into office, or if you get into office? Right. So, I think trailers or trucks have no business going up that bridge, especially if you look at uh, the history of occurrences there. So, they could just go below the bridge. They will still get to where we're going to, or to where they're going to, rather. But at the end of the day, the way the house is set up, too, it is also down to numbers, um, which is why the Labour Party is pushing to get as many of its candidates into the Lagos House of Assembly because that makes it easier to be on the same page in terms right. of party ideologies and things that you want to do. But with that being said, um, I think that as the representative of the people, it is my job, if elected to office, to really fight for what I think is necessary okay. or what is right and to also be convincing about it and to also... At the end of the day, it's also down to, you know, partnerships, alliances, um, you know, things like that. Are you prepared for life as a minority in the House? Because that's also a possibility. Yeah, it is. It is. And if you do, you would, you would almost certainly be punished for coming in there as a minority. Of course. How do you want to cross, you know, the? how do you want to cross over to the other side mm-hmm. and get work done? Because your people don't care that you're a minority. Mm-hmm. They elected you and they expect mm-hmm. results. How do you hope to navigate that? I think with transparency, it, it will help to carry the people along in the process in terms of this is what we're doing, this is how much ground we're covering, these are the challenges that we're facing, but these are the solutions or these are ways we think we can go around the challenges. As long as the people understand what is going on. It's easier to be a part of the process and really follow it and understand why certain things might be delaying or why certain things have to be prioritized over other things in the immediate, which is why I said the biggest thing for me is the style of government. It just needs to be more open and a lot closer to the people. So how can people connect with you and your campaign? How do you mean? You mean in terms of... they want to reach out to you. Right, 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 right. So right now, just, again, owing to the time factor and convenience, social media is the easiest way right now because I'm doing things in person, but not everybody can be everywhere at the same time. So social media, interviews like this... uh, What are the social media handles? So my my social media handle is... My uh, my handle is at Olumide Oworu. Right. So there... Uh, uh, Twitter spaces as well, Instagram lives, social media generally. Is, is there a physical campaign office? So there's no physical campaign office. Oh, very millennial. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? There's no physical campaign office. But, but if we get into <laughs> office, then there will be a physical office set up where right. even if I'm not on ground in the office, people can still go have access to what we're doing, you know, table their complaints. There will be people there to attend to them. We will right. have, you know, filing, all of that, and all of them will be attended. All right. Thank you very much for stopping by this morning. Olumiru is running to represent Surulere One constituency at the Lagos State House of Assembly on the 18th of March, 2023.